Hey, welcome to Backwoods Gourmet. Today we're cooking wild game in the Dutch oven, so y'all stay tuned. Got a nice rabbit. We wanted to do catch, clean, and cook, but you know, the way YouTube's gotten lately, uh, it would just be instantly demonetized. I couldn't make a dime on it. But there's plenty of videos out there. If you want to see how to skin rabbit, chew the rabbit, there's millions of them here on YouTube. Here we're going to show you the most important part because if you don't know how to do this, there's no sense in killing it or skinning it. So this recipe is uh, kind of fancy for rabbit, you know, for a nice cottontail. What we're going to do is we're going to, uh, we're going to brown the rabbit. We're going to braise it with a little marsala wine. Uh, some onions, maybe a little garlic. We're going to make a nice sauce to go with it. And then we're going to do some uh, roasted winter root vegetables, uh, like, you know, parsnips, carrots, those kinds of things. We're going to do it all in a Dutch oven. It's going to be great. Okay, for our side for the rabbit, we're going to go a classic uh, winter root vegetables. Parsnips, fresh carrots, uh, potatoes. This is a peeled turnip. Uh, half a large onion, uh, some nice big cloves of garlic, and we got a few uh, button mushrooms. So let's get that all uh, ready to go in the Dutch oven. Right, so we've got nine or ten on the bottom. We want a nice ring. This time we can actually give a maybe one extra one. It's pretty cold out here today. Maybe two. Yep. The thing about outdoor cooking, some people ask me why I'm always talking about the weather. Well, the weather makes a big difference when you're out here in it trying to cook and not in the house where it's constant temperature. Same thing with the humidity and everything else. It's going to burn a lot differently when you're using natural fuels like this um, when the weather's cold or rainy or whatever. So that's why we usually mention what the weather is so you can kind of learn how to adjust. Alright, so our pot's coming up to heat. We're going to give it a couple tablespoons of olive oil. And then we're going to go ahead and put in the thing that's going to take the longest and that's going to be our potatoes. We'll go ahead and we did toss these on a little olive oil too so that to make sure that they get olive oil on all sides. What we're looking to do is brown these uh, veg just a little bit before we put on the lid and start the roasting process. So as those are uh, starting to get a little color on them, we're going to go ahead and put in the rest of our root veg. Uh, the carrots, the parsnips, and the turnips. Uh, we might give them another just a tiny shot of olive oil. Stir them around a little bit. So we get coated with some olive oil first, and then we'll season them. Here I'm going in with just a little bit of Everglades, uh, one third less salt. You notice we did not put in the garlic or the onions yet. Kind of holding off on those to get a little color on these. Uh, at least get them, at least get them warming up. It's been a few minutes. Let's go ahead and uh, let's try to break these up a little bit. The onions, as we're putting them in there, kind of want them to be the individual uh, kind of pieces. Don't have to be perfect. Then go garlic cloves. Stir them in a little bit. Be ready to put the top on here in just a minute. So guys, what we did, since we need our 12 inch over here for our rabbit, 
we've transferred the veggies. We needed a space, you know, to keep them spread out to get a little color on them. So we're just taking them over. Now we got this nice fond over here in a 12 inch to raise up when we put our rabbit. So we're going to go ahead and put the 10 inch. I wish I had two 12 inches. Uh, I wouldn't have to be doing this. So anyway, they're fine. They're going back into 10 inch. I'm going to go ahead and set that up uh, like we normally would, just a ring of coals all the way around the outside. I'm going to use the ones we had over here. We got some more going. So those are not going to take very long. Um, maybe about 15 minutes, just till our veggies are tender. We don't want to cook them all the way to mush. So we'll get a few more out of the chimney, and then uh, we'll get the other Dutch oven back ready uh, to do our rabbit. Okay, here's our rabbit. I uh, didn't show you how to skin this guy um, or kill him, and there's pretty good reason for that. You know, YouTube don't want anybody to know how to do that kind of thing anymore, and uh, just demonetize your video. So. Um, we'll have all the PETA people, you know, all leaving crappy comments. Now I even got uh, gluten-free people leaving, leaving uh, their, uh, their preaching behind on making stuff like bread and biscuits, telling me it's poison. Uh, there's a lot of trolls here on YouTube uh, really trying to shut people down. So anyway, we didn't show you how to how to skin him. Um, I'm not going to really waste a lot of time with these ribs and uh, the neck portion there. I am going to kind of fillet the meat off the side of the ribs where it's thicker and take that shoulder and just kind of peel it right off of there and peel that rib meat right on off to the down to that backbone part. And you got a nice little loin up here little back loin right in there. I'm going to go ahead and take that part. Those ribs are uh, be excellent for making a stock later if you want to. But they're really hard to pick out of food of your uh, final dish. So basically what we did there was we just flayed off most of the back loin and the rib meat. Um, that's on the outside of the ribs and we'll save this piece and make uh, a nice rabbit stock with it here's our two front shoulders are still connected go ahead and take them apart and this is our back this is the best part of the whole rabbit in my opinion I'm gonna split him right down the backbone with my cleaver okay and then we might even take and uh, cut that piece make it a little more manageable Put that right in half. You could also break these uh, legs down further if you'd like. Um, I don't think it's really necessary. So to our rabbit, I'm just going to add a little drizzle of olive oil. You could use bacon grease. That would be awesome. Going to kind of toss them around, get them all coated. A little coating of seasoning on them. All right, and then we'll uh, season them up real good. This time we're going to use Seminole Swamp Seasoning. And we'll season them real good and get ready for Dutch oven. Okay, Dutch oven's nice and hot. I'm going to go ahead start putting our pieces in there and we're just going to brown them. About the same step you would do with any other kind of a braise. You got olive oil inside there.
right, so our uh, rabbit is nice and brown. We have our onions in there. They're starting to brown. So what you want to do now is go ahead with a little Marsala wine. And we're going to use that just to deglaze the pan. And, you know, you just want to put enough up in there right now that it comes up to a nice bubble. And, man, you're going to smell that aroma from that super rich Marsala wine. And whatever you do, do not get that Marsala or any kind of cooking wine at the grocery store in a ketchup aisle. Okay? That is, is garbage. Go to the wine department, whatever kind of wine it is, whether it's Marsala, red, white, get a medium price, you know, wine that we, you would actually want to drink. That stuff in the ketchup aisle, it's not fit for human consumption as far as I'm concerned. So, we put about a quarter cup of Marsala and we're going to go with about a third of a cup of water. I'm going to go ahead and spread them out a little bit better. Okay, get them all nice and evenly spread out into the bottom so that they're all down in contact with that wine and liquid. Alright, then we're going to put the lid on and get some coals ready right now. So if you're trying to keep something warm in a Dutch oven, first keep the lid on. Just put two coals on top. It'd be great. Just one little tip on eating uh, any kind of wild game. If you let that meat age in the refrigerator for at least a week uh, for small animals like rabbits we're doing here today, squirrels, um, it's going to be way better. Um, I want to thank all you guys for you know coming aboard, being subscribers. Uh, you know, helping us out with what we're doing, and you know, especially this, those guys that you know, my loyals that always comment on every video. Um, we really do appreciate. We try to get back to everybody that has anything constructive to say, uh, other than the trolls. You know, the vegan trolls, and now we got uh, gluten trolls. Uh, we got pita trolls. We got every kind of troll you can imagine, really. Um, but I really want to thank all you guys that are loyal subscribers, and it's, it's so let's go ahead and give it a check. It's been about an hour, all right? Well, what we're checking for now is tenderness. Oh, and you can see that's already coming apart right there. So that's ready. So what we're going to do now is go ahead and take our pieces out. Going to use some uh, some tongs here. Go ahead and pull all these guys out of here. Kind of stick them over here to the side and then we'll make our sauce for what we call here in the south gravy. Okay, sauce gravy. It's the same thing. All right. So we got our pieces out. So what we need now is bottom heat to make this gravy. I'm going to set the Dutch oven off to the side there. What we'll do is we'll just uh, we'll shake our lid coals out. We'll shake them off so we got some more bottom right there. And a couple get away, so we'll have to get those back. Alrighty, well that's up to a uh, just barely a boil. Here our coals are getting worn down a bit. I'm going to go ahead and put a little cornstarch in there. I'll find my, my wooden device here. We just want to try to thicken this up a little bit. I'm not going to, you know, flour southern type gravy on this. It's going to be more like a clear sauce. So I add about a tablespoon and a half of cornstarch so if you can see that that's sticking up quite nicely gonna let it just reduce just a little bit 
and it's got little pieces of the meat in it it's got some of the onions that we put in there in it so all we got to do now really is just test it for seasoning we'll go in with the back of the spoon like this try to that's perfect don't touch it but test yours you may need a little salt or you may want to spice it up okay, it's time to make our uh, famous backwards gourmet plate you know uh, just cause you're cooking backwards don't mean you can't uh, make beautiful food this time I'm gonna take one of my chef's advice and I'm gonna put my gravy right in the bottom of the plate just like that we're gonna kind of run it around to the edges it's done a lot in professional restaurants don't worry if you want more gravy we'll get that for you alrighty now lid back on that stays nice and warm gonna come over and get a little 10 inch over here we just threw that back on the fire for just a second and uh, so we're gonna start coming in and getting you know some of our beautiful veg that uh, cooked in the Dutch oven there potatoes Gonna get a little, you know, just a little bit of everything. There's a turnip. So you got a mushroom there. That's another potato. Another mushroom. Maybe another carrot. Alright. There we go. Man, and I'll tell you what, that really smells awesome. Got my two Dutch ovens in the way of each other. Now for the star of the show. We've had him over here just for a few minutes. We did not want this to cool down. So I wrap them full, put a towel over it. I'm gonna come right in here. One of our beautiful rabbit legs. Okay. Gonna lay that guy right up on top, just like that. So you know you guys, I can't let you go away without a little more gravy, right? So just a drizzle right over top like that. Now for garnish, something pretty simple. This is a savory winter vegetable dish. Little chopped scallions, just like that. There you go. That is a braised marsala rabbit with um, roasted winter vegetables. Thanks for watching the Backwoods Gourmet. If you'd like to check out some great outdoor cooking gear, including a lot of cast iron, like the ones hanging on the wall behind me, please check out our Amazon store. That's right there in the first comment. Hey, if you like what we're doing, hit that like button right down there also. To subscribe to our channel, click right here. To see our last video, it's right up there. And for a whole playlist of cast iron and Dutch oven cooking, right up there. We'll see you next time.